Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Divot for Friday evening, October 6th. As always, the thoughts here are just mine, and in making decisions, you should consult the National Hurricane Center, your local NWS forecast office, and your local emergency management officials. Well, here's Tropical Storm Nate this evening, just before the sun sets, moving toward the Yucatan Channel, hauling north-northwestward now at 21 miles per hour uh, of forward speed. This will bring it across the Gulf of Mexico very quickly, and this will be ashore in the central Gulf Coast, making landfall by late tomorrow night, Saturday evening or nighttime, and uh, this barely has more than 24 hours uh, before it will actually be ashore, and so preparations need to be completed by tomorrow morning, as this will be... Uh, impacting the U.S. before you know it. Unfortunately today the system does appear to be moving into the Yucatan Channel east of the Yucatan Peninsula which is a good good news for the Yucatan but it is uh, bad news for the United States in that the system is remaining over water and will not be weakened or interrupted by the Mexican landmass and as this moves into the Gulf of Mexico conditions appear to favor continued organization and strengthening. If you look at the zoomed in view from NASA here we'll see that the the core has become a little better defined today. We've got the center circulation somewhere within the dry slot here. This is not an eye, just a dry slot, but there is a curved band of convection around the western and southern semicircles, which has increased in depth coverage and has persisted over the last several hours this afternoon and evening. And this is beginning to look like with these convective bursts here, the, the formation of a strong convective core. And uh, this is a key sign that we're watching for is once an inner core forms that can allow these systems to strengthen with a greater pace than if they don't have that. Uh, however, recon observations today so far indicate that a tight inner core wind field has not really formed yet. The, the current plane that's in there as of the making of this video is finding pretty weak winds to the north and south of the system's center at the flight level of 700 millibars, but much, much stronger winds are observed on the eastern side of the storm. These are uh, quite strong, but a little, little removed from the system's center. Uh, in fact, this buoy down here uh, measured a couple of hours ago a sustained wind of 56 miles per hour with gusts to 69. And uh, the storm is moving so fast away from the buoy already that the winds have actually decreased markedly here since that time. But you can see the plane measuring some of the strongest winds on the eastern side and uh, much weaker winds in all other quadrants. Now, to some extent, this is expected because with the system moving so quickly to the north, remember the storm motion uh, is indicative of the steering flow, and so you have this really strong flow out of the south-southeast superimposed on the circulation such that it adds to the winds on this side and makes them stronger, but it fights the winds on this side and makes them weaker. So by far, the strongest winds we will expect to be on the eastern side. But at this point, the system is not as tightly wound as you might expect for winds of about 60 miles per hour that are estimated on the eastern side, precisely because the system is moving so fast and it's really not tightly wound yet. But this convective structure is looking healthier and healthier by the hour that I'm looking at it. And the concern is that if this develops any kind of inner core, any kind of eye wall during the next day as it moves northward, it could intensify quicker. Right now it's strengthening what we would call gradually, uh, but it is not strengthening as rapidly as it could if it acquires a tight inner core. So we'll be watching uh, very carefully for that tomorrow during the daytime and maybe even later on tonight. The good news is that given how quickly it's moving, the time before landfall, about 24 to 30 hours, puts a ceiling on how strong this can get just because it's going to run out of time before uh, by the time it makes landfall. But it will likely be strengthening right up until landfall. And the environment, unfortunately, is uh, rather pristine for it. As we've talked about over the last couple of days, this upper level low has been quickly moving out of Nate's way, and we can see the expansion of outflow now in this upper level cirrus field around the system, rotating clockwise aloft, and uh, dry air is not an issue either. We can see, uh, again, the upper low bringing the dry air out of the way on the western side, and the uh, G4 recon aircraft that's been flying around in the Gulf of Mexico today hasn't really been finding much dry air along this path near and north of the Yucatan Peninsula. So not really expecting dry air to be a huge impediment, and wind shear is low here. So as the system moves north, uh, the environment is favorable. The only thing limiting the system, again, will be its internal structure, and uh, we'll see how long it remains loose. Uh, but if it tightens up uh, substantially overnight and tomorrow, again, we might expect even quicker intensification than we're seeing now. So this is expected to become a hurricane. This is the forecast from the National Hurricane Center showing this becoming a hurricane by landfall time, and this could have sustained winds of maybe 70 to 80 miles per hour currently expected uh, at landfall. And so there are hurricane warnings up here. This will be no picnic from east or west of New Orleans 
to Mobile, Alabama, along the Central Gulf Coast. And again, this could even strengthen a little more, depending on whether or not it gets an inner core tonight and tomorrow. So we're going to be watching very carefully for that. And there could be some quick changes just before landfall in the final hours, as this uh, will likely be strengthening during those final hours. So take this seriously. There could be a substantial wind threat here near the landfall location, and strong winds extend pretty far to the east of the center. So we will see strong winds along a, a long swath of coastline near and east of the landfall point. In addition, there's a very strong uh, monsoonal surge of, of air coming out of the south on the eastern side of this. And so there's a very long, long fetch uh, that is able to push a lot of ocean water into the coastline here along the central and eastern Gulf Coast. And so storm surge is a big concern here, perhaps more than you might think for what is currently expected to be a Category 1 hurricane. But again, storm surge is not directly related to the hurricane's uh, maximum wind. It's more related to the geometry and overall strength of the wind field. And here, since we have such a long fetch, storm surge here could be substantial, especially given the shape of the coastline. And we could see storm surge rises of up to eight feet of inundation above normally dry ground here in the storm surge warning area. And this is something to take seriously if you live in a zone that could be inundated by this water. Again, storm surge uh, is fatal, very fatal, and uh, kills more people than any other impact from a storm. So just because this isn't a hurricane yet and may only be a hurricane for a few hours before landfall doesn't mean that this water threat is uh, not serious and life-threatening because it is, and this is a big deal, probably the biggest threat from Nate. As we look at the forecast again, uh, heavy rains will also potentially bring the potential for flooding uh, inland and uh, several inches of rain is expected to fall along the forecast track despite the fast forward movement and uh, this will be another concern as well. And of course again the wind threat in the hurricane warning area could also be fairly substantial as this will be strengthening at landfall and is expected to be a hurricane. Uh, so this is coming quick. Uh, you got to have your preparations done by tomorrow morning as adverse conditions will be arriving by Saturday afternoon as heavy rain and gusty winds begin to spread uh, northward and onshore as these first bands uh, begin to impact the United States. So uh, this is coming quick, and I'll have another update tomorrow, but this uh, may be pretty close to landfall by that time. Uh, be prepared, stay safe, listen to your local officials and the National Hurricane Center for the latest information, and uh, be prepared. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.